My name is Julianne Delcano Kennard, and in 2014, I died. So in 2014, I was a nurse with a bachelor's in marketing. I mean, I was highly educated, but my inner world was horrible. I was riddled with all of these physiological medical diagnoses and psychological diagnoses. I had many, many specialists to attend to each diagnosis. A psychiatrist, a psychologist, a gastroenterologist, a cardiologist, a urologist. And what had happened is I'm living in my car. I spiraled downwards because I had so much self-hatred, self-disgust. I couldn't physically get out of bed and I judged myself for that. I couldn't physically do what I really wanted to do at my job and I judged myself for that. And I had to downsize, if you will, from a big home to a smaller home, to a small room in a home, and then finally to a car with my son, my youngest son. He was seven at the time and we're living in a campground. And I just got off the phone with my cardiologist and she says that I have this hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. It's imperative that I do not have any stress in my life. And so I started crying. I mean, I just didn't know what to do. I was living in my car with my child. And I remember saying, God, you know, please help me. I felt like a horrible mom. And then at that moment, there was a knock on my window of the car. And outside of the car was a police officer and what looked like to be a, a state worker. You know, he had a badge and a gun and she had a Department of Health CPS, Child Protective Services, name tag. And they told me that they were going to take my son. And so they did. And then after that, everything went dark. And I remember a huge contraction all over my physical body. Pain, not just physical pain, but emotional pain, self-disgust, self-hatred, everything that I was carrying with me. And I fell to the ground, the base of a tree. But I kept falling. And then I fell into the cosmos. And I, I asked, am I dying? And I heard a voice said, stop resisting what is. And it, then I had to face everything that I was running from. I was I had a stalker. I had all of these things and I blamed myself for it. The physical ailments that arose from my physical body, I blamed myself. But then after turning towards the grit, the darkness, going through this darkness, there was light and I was floating. I was floating in this beautiful, blissful, blue black ocean. And Everything that ever was and ever will be was there. I knew exactly why I had the life that I had. It was like as quickly as you would smell a rose. That's how the information came to me. It was so beautiful. This blue blackness was one whole presence, but it was missing experience. And so this oneness began to move, vibrate, and polarize, just like the fingers in my hand. Oneness began to extend out. <gasps> And this color, these colors, these souls, these electromagnetic plasma-like beings, these souls came and could communicate with me non-verbally. It's like they knew what I was saying and, and I knew what they were saying. And it was so exquisitely beautiful. This experience that we have, this human experience, is birthed from this oneness. There is no separation. It's God expressing as a human, as a tree, as a bumblebee, to experience himself. In this human experience, we are enriching God. And so everything, everything made sense. This non-phonetic, non-verbal communication made sense. And I don't know how long I was there and what it looked like from the outside. I have no idea. I'm so grateful that I was in the trees, that nobody could see me. But from the inside, I kept going down into the earth and it was exquisite. There is no beginning and there is no ending and everything made sense. And expressing out as a human, we are given this gift of this beautiful human experience that I feared, this gift of uniqueness, that I wanted to be like other people, this gift of contrast that to me was too much. But waking up on the forest floor, I could see energy around everything, around my being, around the rocks, around my car, around the trees. And this lasted for quite a while. And I could go back just before sleep. And just as I'm waking up, I could go back and there would be this wormhole, like a black hole. 
I could go back and journey to this beautiful bliss. It's beautiful each and every time getting more and more of a download. I guess I want to say I'm so grateful that the sequence in which everything happened. I forgot about my illnesses. I started getting younger looking, but I got a call one afternoon and it was my daughter, my older daughter, telling me to come to her house. And I could sense that something was wrong. And I thought it was my son. I thought something happened to Seth, my son, but it was my youngest daughter, Sophia. She was in a fatal car accident on her way to university. And I remember being startled, shocked. I screamed, but the thing about it is, is I sensed her at peace. I knew exactly where she was and is. She went to the place I just left. Then I had somebody come and pick me up and I went to back to the house and everybody came. All the family was there and I could communicate with Sophia. I could communicate with my beautiful, exquisite daughter in the non-physical. She could see. She was there. She was present when everybody was crying. She was there. It was the most exquisite, beautiful experience because I could see the non-physical and the physical. I could see the pain and the despair of my beautiful family, but also this non-physical comfort. <laughs> Your loved ones are always there. It just changes form. They just change form, but they're there. When you get a sense that, oh, you get a memory or a sensation that maybe your mom or your daughter or your pet is there, they're there. This veil from physical to non-physical is, is, is so thin. Everything, again, that ever was and ever will be is happening right now. Here, we just shift frequency. The safer that we feel in our physical body, the more expanded we are, the more band with the perception we have. And so the more our heart is open, the more that we can sense our loved ones on the other side. And so knowing that I could go back and visit my daughter and spend time with her. And I remember going in to see her <laughs> and we were in this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful realm and there was no verbal communication going on, but I communicated non-physically, non-verbally, non-phonetically to her that I was worried about her father. His heart was broken and he was in despair. And so we traveled from the realm that we were in together through the base of a tree into something I like to call the green realm. It's green in color. And from there, we could see this earthly plane. We could see the frequency, this vibration that we live here on earth. And I could see my ex-husband and his new wife and their children and my other daughter. And they were having dinner at a canal. And I thought, what are they doing? Are they in Italy? And then later I found out that they had taken a trip to Las Vegas. And my older daughter sent me a picture of them sitting there. I saw that. It's when you're there and you come back and you think, oh my gosh, did that really happen? Then there's this sensation, this whiff. The only word I can say, this familiar non-physical essence, it affirms that you were there and this is really happening. And what I want to say is anybody out there that's hurting and feels lost and alone because this human experience is so scary, you're never alone. You're never separate. You are never disconnected. We are this beautiful essence expressing from this oneness, God expressing, giving us the gift of 8 billion expressions unique. There needs to be a uniqueness so this human experience can be full of contrast because if we were all the same, there would be no experience. This uniqueness births contrast and contrast births human experience. This non-dualistic sublime love that sometimes seems so horrible and so hard, but it's there because it's serving a purpose. It's there because we made this decision as souls to come here, to come here and experience this. And through this darkness, through this grit, we grow, we expand consciousness. We send all of this information, this emergent information that comes through the darkness. It goes back to source. Source is enriching itself. God is enriching himself through our human experience. And I just want to say, Look within. If you have this sense, if you're hurting and you are lost and alone, close your eyes and look within. Look within with these non-physical eyes. Look within to the presence that lives in your heart. That's that voice of God. That's that intuitive essence rising up, rising up into each and every one of you. 
it's there. It never leaves you. I just want to say thank you so much for listening to my story. Thank you so much. And as one fellow human to another, you are never alone. You are never lost. That intuitive essence always rests within you, always sending you a message. We just need to be present to listen, to honor that. If you want to reach out to me, read our book. You can find all the information in the description box below. Thank you so much.